Okay, so welcome again to the One World Mathematical Game Theory Seminar. Today we are hosting Mira Frick, um, who, as far as I can see, has almost a complete sweep of the most prestigious universities around the world. On the west coast of the US, she's been associated with Stanford and Berkeley. On the east coast of the US, she's been associated with Harvard, Yale, and Princeton. She's now at Yale. And in Europe, she's been at the uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure in France and in the University of Oxford in England. So um, I don't know if I need to add any more. <laughs> Go ahead, Mira. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the introduction and for the opportunity to present as part of the seminar. Um, so I'm going to present joint work with uh, Lyota Ijima and Yuta Ishii. And Lyota is actually also on Zoom. So if you want to ask him questions in the chat, feel free to uh, reach out to him. Okay, so coordination problems under uncertainty about a payoff relevant state of the world are ubiquitous in economics from joint investment and technology adoption decisions to currency attacks, bank runs, and many other settings. Uh, now, as is well known in such settings, there are two important obstacles to coordinating on an efficient outcome. Uh, first, players first order uncertainty about the state and second, their higher order uncertainty about other players' beliefs. And so given this, a natural question is to understand which information structures are more effective at reducing both these types of uncertainty and hence at facilitating coordination. And so in uh, this paper, we address this question by conducting a comparison of multi-agent information structures in a learning setting. Uh, specifically, uh, we assume that players have access to many draws of private signals from an information structure, where you can think of the idea that they see many draws of signals as capturing that data is cheap or abundant. And we assume that these signals are generated independently across draws, but may display potentially arbitrary correlation across different players' signals. Our starting point is a seminal uh, result due to Cripps, Ely, Melath, and Samuelson, which shows that uh, in this setting, um, uh, under some natural assumptions, uh, we get common learning, meaning that uh, all information structures are going to induce approximate common knowledge of the state uh, in the limit as the number of signal draws goes to infinity. However, importantly, this result is silent about which information structures accomplish this more effectively, so are more effective at reducing both first order and higher order uncertainty. And so to understand this question, in this paper, we take the natural approach uh, of comparing which information structures lead to faster common learning in the sense of inducing a greater chance of approximate common knowledge uh, away from the limit, so after a large but finite number of signal observations. Um, so specifically, our first main result in the paper precisely characterizes the speed of common learning under each information structure. And our characterization is based on the key insight that I'll be highlighting throughout the talk, that we show that under every information structure, higher order uncertainty, in fact, vanishes faster than first order uncertainty. And as a result, uh, we show that the speed of common learning simply coincides with the speed at which uh, individual players learn the state. And we characterize this by means of a simple uh, learning efficiency index. And second, we apply uh, this characterization to obtain a ranking over information structures in terms of their value uh, in coordination problems. Uh, in particular, we show that information structures with higher learning and efficiency uh, lead to better equilibrium outcomes uh, in all coordination games that are played after sufficiently many uh, signal draws. And as I'll discuss, uh, this yields some robust uh, implications for information design in games uh, played in data-rich settings. So just briefly to put this in context, so uh, our paper contributes to the very rich literature on higher order beliefs. Uh, now, a central insight in this literature is that higher order uncertainty uh, can be an important source of inefficiency in coordination games. Uh, 
reflecting the fact that even when uh, first order uncertainty is small, uh, higher order uncertainty can still be significant. Uh, in contrast, in this paper, we highlight that in natural learning settings where players have access to many uh, signal draws, higher uncertainty vanishes faster than first order uncertainty and eventually becomes negligible relative to first order uncertainty. Uh, to make this point, as mentioned, we focus on the common learning framework of Cripps, Ely, Maylath, and Samuelson, uh, but our key contribution relative to theirs is to conduct a comparison of different information structures uh, in terms of the speed at which they approximate common knowledge. And then our analysis of the speed of common learning uh, builds on Moscherini and Smith's characterization of the speed of uh, individual uh, learning in single agent settings, as I'll discuss in a moment. Uh, and finally, this paper uh, more broadly relates to the large literatures on information design and games and uh, comparison of information structures and games. Let me skip the details. Uh, one, one key difference is that uh, we focus in this paper on, on data rich settings uh, where players have access to uh, many signal draws uh, from each information structure. Okay, so here's the learning environment. Um, there is a finite set N of agents, a finite set theta of states, and agents share a full support uh, common prior P0 over states. An information structure I uh, consists of a space XI of private signals for each agent I, which we assume is finite. Let X denote the set of profiles of private signals along with a joint uh, distribution over profiles of signals in each state. And I'm going to denote this by mu theta. So this joint signal distribution allows for arbitrary correlation across player signals. And we let mu i theta denote the marginal distribution over uh, player i's private signals. We assume that uh, all these marginal distributions, mu i theta have full support, and uh, that they're distinct across different states, theta and theta prime. And so we're going to be interested in settings where agents observe not one, but repeated IID signal draws from an information structure, uh, where T uh, is going to capture the number of signal draws. Okay, so let me first start by uh, re reviewing uh, the important result due to Cripps, Ely, Melath, and Samuelson that this setting gives rise to common learning. And so formally for any P uh, between zero and one, let BTP of theta denote the event that all agents individually uh, P believe uh, state theta after a T signal draws. So uh, all agents individually assign probability at least P to state theta. Let CTP of theta uh, denote the event that state theta is commonly P believed after a T signal draw. So uh, this means that all players individually P believe uh, state theta. They P believe that all other players P believe state theta. Uh, they P believe that all other players P believe that all other players P believe state theta and so on along the entire infinite hierarchy of beliefs. So Cripps, Ely, Melath, and Samuelson's result is that uh, for each information structure, uh, agents are going to commonly learn the true state in the sense that for any P uh, and for each state theta, uh, the probability that players achieve common P belief of the true state uh, theta uh, converges to one as the number of signal draws goes to infinity. So this is saying that as uh, T goes to infinity, all information structures eliminate both first order and higher order uncertainty. But what we're going to be interested in is how to compare different information structures in terms of how effectively they eliminate uh, first order and higher order uncertainty uh, away from the limit. And so specifically uh, to formalize this, we're going to be interested in what, what is the rate of convergence to common P belief here under each information structure. So this is going to allow us to compare the probability with which uh, different information structures induce common P belief uh, at all large but finite T. 
So this question about the rate of uh, common learning or speed of common learning is going to be my focus for most of the talk. Uh, but then in the final part of the talk, oops, in the final part of the talk, I'll apply uh, our answer to this question to uh, uh, characterize uh, a ranking over information structures in terms of their value in coordination problems that are played after players observe a large but finite number of signal draws. Okay, so before going into the analysis, let me just illustrate this question about the speed of common learning uh, by means of a simple uh, two by two by two example. Uh, so here we have two agents, uh, we have two states, a high state and a low state. And for each, and the information structure is a simple binary information structure where for each agent, uh, her set of private signals is simply the set of states and where the joint signal distribution in each state theta is parameterized by two parameters. Uh, first, there's an individual precision parameter gamma between a half and one. So this captures the probability with which each, sign each agent's signal matches the state. So the probability that x1 is equal to theta is, is going to be gamma in state theta. And likewise, the probability that x2 is equal to theta is equal to gamma in state theta. And then second, there's a correlation parameter rho uh, which captures how correlated agent signals are. So the higher rho, uh, the more correlated our signals. Um, in particular, if rho is equal to one, that would mean that signals are perfectly correlated. Okay, so in the context of the simple example, our question about the speed of common learning then boils down to asking if you have uh, two uh, parameter combinations, gamma rho and gamma tilde rho tilde, uh, under which of these two is common learning going to be faster? And so here intuitively a higher gamma should be helpful because this is going to reduce uh, first order uncertainty if, if both players uh, individual signal precisions are higher. But one might think that rho should also matter because rho affects uh, players uh, higher order uncertainty about other players signals um, and hence uh, one might think that this should also matter for, for, for uh, the, the probability of common learning. And so ex ante, it might then not be obvious how to compare uh, these two uh, uh, parameter combinations, how to trade off these two considerations between individual precision and correlation. Um, but our general results are going to allow us to answer this question. And so let me then present uh, our general uh, characterization of the speed of common learning uh, returning to, to the general setup. Uh, for this, uh, let me first uh, recall a standard uh, statistical measure uh, of the speed at which a single agent individually learns the state. Uh, so for this, we consider a single agent I and uh, suppose the true state is theta. Then we can measure how easy agent I finds it to distinguish uh, any other state theta prime from the true state theta by considering the Chanoff uh, statistical distance. So I denote this by D of mu i theta, mu i theta prime. And what this considers is the minimum over all signal distributions mu i of the maximum between the kullback leibler divergence of mu i relative to mu i theta and mu i relative to mu i theta prime. Now, if you look at this for a moment, it will become clear that uh, at any minimizer new i here, it has to be that these two KL divergencies are equalized. So what this Chanoff distance is simply capturing is the distance from i's uh, signal distribution in state theta and i's signal distribution in state theta prime to their midpoint in terms of KL divergence. So the smaller this distance, the closer are these two signal distributions to each other. Uh, and hence the more difficult it is to statistically distinguish the two states based on observing uh, repeated signal draws from either of these distributions. Okay, so using the Chanoff distance, we then, um, oh, was there a question? Yeah. Uh, Mira, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind telling me this, uh, what this KL midpoint is? I'm sorry, I don't know. That's probably oh. something very basic. Yeah, so so the kullback leibler divergence, right? That's a measure of distance between um, statistical distributions, between probability measures. And so what I mean by KL midpoint here is simply that 
the minimizer nu i in this uh, expression is equally close to mu i theta and to mu i theta prime in terms of KL distance. So, um, so if you have two distributions, mu i theta and mu i theta prime, we're going to look at the distributions nu i that are equidistant from the two. And, and so those can be viewed as the midpoint. And, and this chain of distance simply captures the distance to this midpoint. Does that answer your question? Well, I'm afraid I don't know what this KL means. Oh, oh, so the Kobach library divergence is, I should have written it out. So, so this is uh, looking at the uh, expected um, log likelihood ratio of signals under mu i and mu i theta, where the expectation uh, is taken relative to mu i here. So intuitively, this is capturing how, how far apart um, uh, the signal observed signal distribution mu i is relative to some reference distribution mu i theta. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and so using this channel of distance, uh, one can then characterize uh, agent i's speed of individual learning in state theta as follows. So the speed is exponential in the sense that the probability that agent i achieves individual p-belief of the true state theta converges to one at this exponential rate, uh, lambda i theta, where lambda i theta simply considers the lowest Chernoff distance between mu i theta and mu i theta prime in any other state theta prime. So to characterize the speed of individual learning, one considers, one focuses on the state theta prime that is hardest for agent i to distinguish from the true state theta. Um, and so this then gives us a measure of uh, an individual agent I's uh, learning efficiency. So our first main result is that um, to characterize the speed of common learning, we can simply consider the following simple multi-agent learning efficiency index. So this I'm going to denote by lambda theta. And what this does is to simply uh, take the the minimal uh, lear individual learning efficiency index across all agents i. So this multi-agent learning efficiency index simply considers the slowest agent's rate of individual learning. By contrast, it does not depend at all on the correlation across different agent signals. So for instance, in the previous uh, binary example where the information structure was parameterized by an individual precision parameter gamma and the correlation parameter rho, this learning efficiency index is going to be strictly increasing in individual precision gamma as we expected, but it's in fact completely independent of the correlation uh, parameter rho. And so our first main result says the following, uh, fix any information structure i, then for each state theta and each p, the probability at which players achieve common p belief of the true state theta converges to one at exponential rate given precisely by this multi-agent learning efficiency index. And moreover, the same is true of the probability of individual p belief, so the probability that players achieve individual p-belief of the true state also converges to one at the same exponential rate. Okay, so let me discuss this result a little bit. So the second part that the probability of uh, individual uh, p-belief converges to one at rate given by our multi-agent learning efficiency index, that's just immediate from the preceding characterization of the speed of uh, single agent learning. The substantive part of the result is the first part about the speed of common learning. And so here note that common p-belief is of course a much more demanding notion than individual p-belief. It requires uh, confidence, not just uh, in terms of players' first order beliefs about the state, but it requires their entire uh, infinite hierarchy of beliefs to become confident. And so based on this, it might then be natural to expect, and indeed that's what we expected when we started working on this paper, uh, that common learning should be slower than individual learning. However, what this result is showing is that as the number of signal observations grows large, common learning and individual learning, in fact, occur at the same rate 
uh, which is given by this multi-agent learning efficiency index. And so as I'll illustrate in a moment, uh, the key idea behind this result is that uh, under every information structure, higher order uncertainty vanishes faster than first order uncertainty. And so for this reason, when it comes to looking at the speed of common learning, uh, this simply ends up boiling down to the speed of individual learning. This is further reflected by the fact that um, this learning efficiency index, lambda theta, does not depend on the correlation across different players' signals. So if players observe just few signal draws, then it's easy to see that the probability of common p-belief will in general be affected by the correlation across their signals. However, what this result shows is that under sufficiently large samples of signals, correlation across agent signals has a negligible effect on common p-belief and all that matters is kind of individual signal, a player's individual signal informativeness. Okay, so let me briefly illustrate uh, the yeah, idea. Yeah. yeah, are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so the theorem applies, applies to the example or it's a gen more general? This is more general. So this applies to, to our general setup, which um, so the only key substantive restriction is really that um, states and signals are finite. And I can say a little bit more about that. Towards and and the what end. is raw then in the general case? It's the... Oh, oh there's, there's no, no single parameter row necessarily, but we have the joint distribution. So if you, if we go back to the general setup, we have a uh, we have a joint uh, signal distribution in each state theta, right? And this can be arbitrary. So this can display arbitrary correlation across different players' signals. So, in that sense, so rho is undefined in the general for general information structures? Yeah, there's not necessarily a single correlation parameter rho uh, for general information structures, but this joint signal distribution could display arbitrary correlation. But note that the uh, learning efficiency index depends only on the marginal signal distributions because each of these individual uh, learning rates depends only on uh, player I's marginal signal distribution in each state. And the, uh, the multi-agent learning efficiency index is looking just at the lowest individual learning efficiency index. So this tells you that correlation doesn't matter. All that matters is the, the marginal signal distributions of different players. I see, okay. So sorry, Mira. So yeah. so 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 somehow you say that because of the correlation doesn't matter too much, then somehow it causes that the uh, higher order uncertainties are are vanishing faster or not as important as first order ones. So is it, those those things are somehow related. Yes, those two things are kind of in, in a way uh, two sides of the same coin. So it's really it's uh, these two findings are, are are related, and I'm I'm now going to illustrate why that's the case. So 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 if maybe, you would use another yeah. information stuff to measure the uh, learning uh, speed or something, then you would get something else. Because in this case, the correlation doesn't matter. So because of the correlation doesn't matter, you get the higher order uncertainties, not to- Oh, improve. so this is a result. So the result is that correlation doesn't matter. So our index okay. um, doesn't yeah, feature index. correlation, but this turns out to be the right index to capture the speed of common learning. So the result is really that uh, uh -huh. common learning, uh, the speed of common learning only depends on marginal signal informativeness. It does not depend on the correlation across different. I ah, see. So, so if, if, if this index depends on the marginals only, then the correlation doesn't matter. And then because so of this, the, the higher, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay, so so let me maybe illustrate the the kind of basic idea behind this this main result uh, by again revisiting our our illustrative example. So um, I'm going to assume specifically that the individual precision parameter is three fifths here and correlation parameter is five twelfths. So this gives rise to the following uh, joint uh, signal probabilities. Um, and so note that in this, with these specific parameters, um, the two player signals are in fact going to be negatively correlated, uh, but this is not important for our general arguments. Uh, okay, so. I, I still have a little question. Yeah. Uh, 
the theorems are are um, formulated for a fixed p, right? Uh, for any p, so for for yeah. fixed, but any p, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but for fixed p, so the probability. Uh, but then it seems that it doesn't reflect really uh, high order uncertainty or anything. I mean, there should be something that allows p to go to one. Yeah. So you can approach common knowledge really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But P can be arbitrarily close to one here. And note that the index does not depend on P. So the rate of convergence is the same no matter how close P is to one. So even for P very, very close to one, the rate of convergence to common P belief will still be the same as the rate of convergence to individual P belief. Yes, still, I would say, OK, but still P, P can be very close to one, but fixed. And then, OK, and then the rate of convergence is dependent of P. But the question is whether, in some sense, uh, when you accumulate more and more uh, signals, you uh, converge to C1 of mm -hmm. uh, P theta with probability 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. So, so you want P to actually be B1. Um, yeah, so we can, we can get no, arbitrary. P will not be 1, but I want yeah. really P to converge to 1. Yeah, yeah, we can. So we can let p converge to one. I guess it's sort of an order of limits question you're asking. So we're saying fix p and then let t grow large, and and then the rate of convergence is going to be yeah. given by this index. Uh, maybe you want a different rate of convergence. And so, so note that there is this little o of t term here, um, which becomes negligible as t grows large. But this little o of t term could, in principle, depend on p, and indeed will depend on p. So, okay. so maybe that's something you would be interested. If they try in. to, if they try to go, to let both t and p, p to infinity and p to one, yeah, uh, then the rate may change. Um, yeah, so I think I think the rate might still be uh, this rate, yeah. but I guess the point at which so this this um, this result is going to sort of kick in when t is sufficiently large. So when t is sufficiently large, the the rate here will dominate the little o of t term. Uh -huh. But just how large t needs to be for that depends on what the little o of t term is, and so that might depend on p. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to yeah revisit this illustrative example with these particular parameters, and under these parameters, signals are, are negatively correlated, but this is not going to be important for the general arguments. And so let mu i t uh, denote i's empirical signal distribution up to t, so this keeps track of the fraction uh, of each signal that uh, player i sees um, after uh, t signal draws. And note that this is a sufficient statistic for I's first order and higher order beliefs. And so I'm going to suppose that the true state is the, the high state and, and that T is sufficiently large. Then note that um, at large T, um, the event that players have individual P belief of the high state can be approximated by the event that each player's uh, empirical uh, signal distribution has fraction greater than a half of the high signal. Um, so this is depicted graphically here by this uh, square, um, where I'm uh, I'm viewing this as a subset of the space uh, of the product space of uh, one's empirical uh, frequency of the high signal and two's empirical frequency of the high signal. And so this approximation is intuitive. So you know, if, if uh, t is sufficiently large, then i is going to become confident in the high signal in the high state if the majority of i signals uh, matches the high state. Just a moment. I, I, why is it true at large t? Why? It's, what's the importance of half? I am missing something here. Most probably. Oh, so so this is this is the two signal two state case, right? And and the the high signal is more likely in the high state because gamma is greater yeah. than a yeah. half, yeah. and the low signal is more likely than the low state. And so in the long run, players uh, uh, first order beliefs are going to concentrate on the state. Uh, for which you've seen more signals. And so if you've seen more high signals, in particular, more than half of your signals are high signals, then um, at large T, you're going to concentrate on, on the high state in your beliefs. And it's independent of P again, right? Of yeah, this is independent of P. Yeah. Um, and by contrast, um, the event that players have common P belief of the high state is a strictly smaller event, in particular in this setting. 
uh, this can be approximated at large t uh, by the event that uh, both players uh, have seen fraction greater than a half of pi signals, uh, but also greater than uh, less than 911 for pi signals. So this corresponds to the smaller square within uh, BTP. So what's the idea here? Where does the 911th come from? Um, so with these parameters I've chosen, uh, one can see that if uh, agent I observes fraction greater than 9-11th of high signals, then because the two player signals are negatively correlated, I is going to expect that player J in fact saw fr a fraction less than a half of uh, high signals. So I is going to expect that J becomes confident in, in the low state, in the wrong state. Uh, whereas conversely, if I does observe a fraction of high signals that is between a half and 9 11, uh, then uh, I is going to expect uh, the same to be true for player J. So she's going to expect that J also saw uh, between a half and 9 11 of, of high signals. And so based on this, one can then show uh, this approximation of the set of, uh, of the event uh, that common p belief obtains. Okay, so what this means then is that we can decompose uh, the uh, event that uh, common p-belief fails into two different uh, types of failures. So first we have what we call first order belief failures. So this is where at least one player uh, fails to individually, uh, fails to have individual p-belief of the high state. And so this is depicted here by this gray region, which is just the, the complement of BTP. So this is where at least one player uh, observed fraction less than a half of high signals. And second, uh, we have uh, higher order belief failures, which is the case where both players do have individual P belief of the high state, uh, but they don't have common P belief. And so by the preceding approximations, this is uh, given by this blue region here, where uh, both players have seen fraction greater than a half of high signals, but at least one player has seen fraction less than 911, uh, has also seen fraction greater than 911 of high signals. And so to understand the speed of common learning, what we then want to understand is the rate at which both these types of the probability of observing both these types of failures uh, vanishes as t grows large. And so here, the key insight of our argument is going to be that at large t, the probability of higher order belief failures, in fact, becomes negligible relative to the probability of first order belief failures. And so all that matters for the speed of common learning is going to be how fast these first order belief failures vanish, which will be given by our learning efficiency index. And so formally, uh, to show this, uh, note that both uh, the higher order belief failures and the first order belief failures uh, become very unlikely events as the number of signal draws grows large. So to analyze how fast these very unlikely de events decay, we're going to have to use large deviation theory. So specifically, we use Sanoff's theorem from large deviation theory, which says that for any uh, set uh, D of joint empirical distributions, the probability uh, that players observe an em uh, a empirical distribution in D conditional on the high state uh, decays exponentially at a rate given by the kullback leibler uh, divergence uh, between D and the theoretical signal distribution in the high state. So the further this event D is from the true theoretical signal distribution in the high state, the faster it, its probability decays as the number of signal draws grows large. And so applied then to the current simple example, this result tells us that uh, to find the rate at which the probability of first order belief failures decays, we can look at the uh, KL distance from either player's uh, theoretical signal distribution uh, in, in the high state to this region here in gray where we have first order belief failures. So, so the rate at which uh, the probability of first order belief failures decays can be represented by the KL distance corresponding to either of these solid arrows here. In contrast, the rate at which higher order belief failures uh, decay 
for this, we need to look at uh, the distance from the theoretical distributions to this blue region where we have higher order belief failures. And so this uh, rate can be represented by uh, either of these uh, dashed distances here. And so note now that the dashed distances are greater than the solid distances. And so this then tells us that uh, the probability of uh, uh, higher order belief failures uh, decays faster than the probability of first order belief failures. Uh, indeed, because these are exponential rates, this tells us that the probability of higher order belief failures becomes negligible relative to the probability of first order belief failures at sufficiently large t. And so the rate of common learning then just boils down to the rate of individual learning, which is given by the learning efficiency index. Okay, so beyond these graphical illustrations, what's the general idea here? So why, why is it that the probability of higher order belief failures vanishes faster than first order belief failures? So to establish this, we prove uh, the following key information theoretic lemma. So for this, we're going to assume that uh, player I observed some particular empirical distribution mu i t. And then conditional on I observing this new IT and on state theta, we're going to consider I's expectation of J's observations, of J's empirical uh, distribution, new JT. Okay, so we're considering I's expectation of J's empirical frequency, new JT, conditional on her own observation, new IT, and on the state being theta. And so this key lemma um, says the following. For all T and all empirical signal distributions, uh, new IT observed by agent I, the uh, distance between I's expectation of what J has observed and J's theoretical distribution in state theta is smaller than the distance between I's own uh, signal observations and I's theoretical distribution in state theta where these distances are again in terms of KL divergence. And moreover, this inequality is strict uh, whenever new IT uh, doesn't happen to exactly coincide with the theoretical uh, distribution and when the joint distribution new theta has full support. Okay, so in words, what is this lemma saying? Um, so this lemma is saying that if I uh, forms uh, an expectation or an estimate of J's signal observations based on her own signal observations, then that estimate is going to be less atypical relative to the theoretical distribution than I's own observations. So I expects J to see signals that are less atypical than her own. For, for example, if uh, signals are independent uh, across the two agents, then I is always going to, then I's own signals don't convey any information about J's signal. So I is always going to expect uh, J's uh, empirical distribution to just be the theoretical distribution in state theta. So this left-hand side will be zero. On the other hand, if signals are perfectly correlated, then I expect J to see exactly the same signals as herself. And so this uh, inequality is going to hold with equality. And so this lemma also captures all other cases in between, the case of negative correlation. And so this inequality holds in all those cases. And so in the proof, we then use this lemma uh, to show more generally that the probability of higher order belief failures uh, vanishes faster than that of first order belief failures. And so let me just briefly note that the proof of this lemma uses uh, the chain rule for KL divergence. So this is uh, one of the central results in information theory. And so um, incorporating these uh, information theoretic arguments is, is one of the key ways in which we refine uh, the analysis in, in Kripsi, Lee, Maylath, and Samuelson to obtain a characterization of the rate of common learning as opposed to just showing that common learning occurs. So Mira, sorry. So yeah. looking at this lemma, so yeah. suppose I'm player I or agent I, mm -hmm. and somehow at point T, I, my, my mu is exactly my mu. 
Mm -hmm. yes. Somehow I'm very, very precise. So on the right hand side, I have zero, if I understand correctly. Uh, ex exactly. So then the right hand side would be zero. And so in that case, the, the inequality is, is, is just uh, an equality. So, 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 but why should I think that you also know precisely your distribution? Because because I know that my I know my distribution is is the real one. So so I, I so so what is the intuition? So so why I think that you are at I think that you are at least as well informed that as I am, right? That's yeah, the level. Yeah. yeah. So you always, in some sense, you always think that your uh, in expectation at least your your signals can't be any more atypical than than my own. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I see. So, so yeah. So one, I'm not sure if it's a if it's a particularly good intuition, but one way of thinking about this is, um, so another way of interpreting this result is in terms of the what's known as the second law of thermodynamics for Markov chains. So, okay. so you can think of um, you can think of, uh, and this this relates, of course, to to work by Dov. You can think of um, this uh, process of expectations over. Uh, other agents' signal observations, given my own signal observations, as as uh, defining a Markov chain over the space of um, of signal observations, and um, so what this lemma is in some say, some sense saying is that if you iterate this Markov chain, then as you iterate it, you become closer and closer to the um, stationary distribution or to the initial distribution. Um, so so mm -hmm. my own observation. Um, is kind of the first step. And if I now take the expectation, I'm iterating the, the Markov chain one step further, and that brings me uh, closer to the, to the initial distribution. Um, so so that's, that's kind of capturing the mathematical intuition for why, why this result uh, holds. And, and so this result is then translating this into the sort of the statements about uh, own signal observations versus other signal observations, which then translate mm -hmm. into higher order belief failures versus first order belief failures. Let me say something, but T is fixed, right, in the lemma. Yeah, so this holds for all T. Um, yeah. And the reason we need to be need T to then be large for, for our theorem is because this is just a result about expectations of opponent signal observations. But we then combine, combine this with kind of law of large no numbers arguments to show that when T is sufficiently large, I am very confident that opponents' um, signals will, in fact, concentrate on this expectation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this lemma holds for all T. Yeah, but then the case that uh, Miklos mentioned on the right hand side will have zero, and so also the left hand side is zero, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, so, so the explanation in terms of Markov chain, the Markov chain, what, what change in the Markov chain is T, right? Uh, so the Markov chain is, is these expectations. Yeah, maybe this was confusing to say without uh, additional notation, but um, the idea here is, so the first step is my own empirical frequency. Then I take mm -hmm. the expectation over your empirical frequency. So I go from I to J, sorry, I go from I to J. And then this Markov chain would continue by now looking at J's expectation of I's observation, but all this for fixed T. So you can completely ignore T for this Markov chain. Okay, great. Um, so, any other questions about this result? Um, Just me, me again. Yeah. Sorry. So, so end yeah. of the day, so everything, all results depends on on your index, it's where you use it. Yeah. Beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you said it, 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 some minutes ago you told me that it turned out that that index is the good one. The right index. Yeah. The right. Yeah. Okay. You use the right word. The word right. Um, uh, for me, this lemma is, is, is very surprising somehow. So it, it, it mm -hmm. says me that if, I would say that I would say that in learning, I can imagine that I think that somebody missing the point much more than I miss. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't tell what. Yeah, so it, it turns out that that's not the case. So I always expect opponent signal observations to be less atypical than my own. So right. then why do you use that, uh, that index? Why do you say that? The index at the very beginning is the right one. Is the right one, yeah. So, so again, so this is really 
we didn't choose to use this index. This is just a result. So, so I could have written this result as saying the, the speed of common learning is characterized by this index, which happens to be given by the index here. So the result is that the speed of common learning occurs at this particular rate. And that's why I'm saying this is the right index. This is the index ah, that captures okay. the rate. In this of sense. The... Okay. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Thanks. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I have kind of 10 minutes left to go. Um, is that right? Yes. 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 yes okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So then let me use the final part of the talk um, to then briefly explain how we use this first result about the speed of common learning to obtain a ranking over information structures in terms of their uh, value for coordination problems. And so for this, we augment our basic learning environment um, as follows. So a basic game, uh, G, uh, consists of a finite action space, AI for each player, I, and a, a utility UI over action profiles and states uh, for each player. And, um, and so we're going to be interested in the setting where such a basic game is played after players have observed uh, T draws of signals from some information structure. So in other words, we're considering an incomplete, static incomplete information game uh, where information is parameterized by the number of signal draws T from I. So we're going to denote this game by GTI. And we're interested in the Bayes-Nash equilibria of GTI. And so to compare these equilibrium outcomes under different information structures, we're going to associate with uh, each game G an objective function W uh, over action profiles and states. So you can think of this as capturing, for instance, uh, utilitarian welfare in the game, uh, but it could also capture uh, designers' preferences that don't necessarily have to relate to uh, players' utilities in any particular way. And we assume that in each state theta, there's a unique uh, optimal uh, W optimal action profile, A theta W uh, of the game. And so then to evaluate equilibrium outcomes under different information structures uh, for each information structure I and T, we're going to consider the ex anti expectation of this objective W under the best uh, Bayes-Nash equilibrium of the game. So I'm going to denote this by WTGI. And so our goal is given any two information structures I and I tilde, we want to characterize when uh, this uh, objective uh, that we can obtain under information structure I exceeds that under information structure I tilde for all large enough T and ideally for a rich class of games G and objective functions W. And so in particular, it turns out that um, our learning efficiency index will allow us to rank uh, information structures in a way that they uh, apply, uh, that the ranking applies robustly across the following class of games and objective functions. So we impose one key assumption, which is a joint assumption on the game and the objective function, and we call this alignment at certainty. So this says that for each state theta, the W best action profile, A theta W of G, is a strict Nash equilibrium of G under common knowledge of theta. So this is saying that under common knowledge of the state, uh, the first best objective is strictly achievable in equilibrium. Uh, and the leading example where this is satisfied is the motivating example where W would be utilitarian welfare and G would be a coordination game where um, the efficient coordination is an equilibrium uh, under common knowledge of the state, uh, but where first order or higher order uncertainty impede efficient coordination. Um, I'll illustrate this in a moment in the context of a coordinated attack game. Note that this assumption is much weaker than assuming that we're in a common interest game where all players' utilities are the same. So in a common interest game, we would have full alignment where uh, players' uh, incentives and the objective are fully aligned even away from common knowledge. Here, we're just saying that these are aligned at the common knowledge limit. Okay, and then for today's talk, I'm also going to impose the following assumption for expositional simplicity. This can be dropped. It just makes the statements a little bit more complicated. And so the second assumption says that for each player I and any two distinct states, um, 
player I's action in the efficient action profile uh, in state theta is different from her action in the efficient action profile in state theta prime. So in other words, this is saying that the first best outcome uh, requires all players to distinguish all states. Okay, so let me just briefly illustrate this uh, uh, assumption in the context of a coordinated attack game. Um, so we have n players, uh, each player has two actions, attack one or not attack zero. There are two states, a high state, which is the state that's favorable to attack, and a low state, which is the state that's unfavorable to attack. And each player's utility UI is such that um, if she attacks, she incurs a cost of C, and she obtains a payoff of one if and only if the attack is successful, which happens if and only if the state is high and at least K players attack. And otherwise she obtains a payoff of zero. So in this game, the utilitarian efficient actions are for all players to attack in the high state, uh, no players to attack in the low state. And note that these are indeed strict Nash equilibria under common knowledge of the state. And so this means our alignment at certainty condition is satisfied and the second assumption is also satisfied. Okay, so um, our second result then is that we can use our learning efficiency index to rank information structures uh, in terms of their value for all these environments. Um, so specifically, we consider uh, an ex ante version of the learning efficiency index, so uh, denote this by lambda of I, uh, which considers the worst case learning efficiency index across all states theta. Then our second result says the following, uh, take any two information structures, I and I tilde, such that I has a higher uh, learning efficiency index. Then for any game G and objective W satisfying the two assumptions, there exists a large enough number of signal draws T, such that whenever players observe more than T signal draws, then the uh, expected objective under I will exceed that under I tilde. So this result provides a generically complete ranking over information structures uh, that applies in any uh, coordination uh, problem or, or other game uh, and objective satisfying our assumptions, uh, as long as we're in a sufficiently data-rich environment where players have access to sufficiently many draws of signals. Uh, the ranking is generically complete because it can rank any two information structures whose efficiency indices are, are different if the indices are exactly tied, the ranking is silent. And so this applies robustly across all these uh, environments. And so the fact that this applies robustly across all these different environments, G and W, uh, relies crucially on our first finding that the speed of common learning is equal to the speed of individual learning. And so let me now illustrate why that's the case. Uh, so to illustrate this, let's go back to the coordinated attack example. And so there to show that Lambda I uh, provides the appropriate uh, uh, ranking over information structures, it suffices to show that Lambda I is the fastest rate at which any uh, BNE sequence can converge to the efficient outcome uh, in each state. Um, and so why is that? Uh, why is this the case? So for this, we need to show two things. First, we need to show that we can reach efficiency at least at this rate, lambda i. But this is pretty clear from the first result because note that uh, common p belief for p sufficiently large is going to be sufficient for players to achieve efficient coordination. Uh, this is because we're assuming that the efficient outcome uh, is a strict Nash equilibrium under common knowledge, which then means that as long as P is sufficiently large, this can be played uh, as part of a, a BNE sequence uh, whenever players have a common P belief of the state. And so we saw by the first result that uh, lambda i is the rate at which players achieve uh, common uh, p-belief of the state, so their rate of common learning. And so this uh, then means this is the uh, this is uh, provides a lo lower bound on the rate at which players can achieve efficient coordination. 
What's perhaps less clear is why can't players converge to efficient coordination any faster than this rate? Because note that if the number of players K that are required for an, a su successful attack is less than the total number of players, then common P belief is not necessary for all agents to uh, be willing to attack. However, note that at the very least, we need individual P belief for some P for, for agents to be willing to attack. And so for this reason, it then again turns out that inefficiency can vanish no faster than this rate lambda i, because we saw that this is not only the rate of common learning, but also the rate at which players individually learn the state. So that's the uh, basic idea behind uh, theorem two. Um, and so uh, let me just briefly highlight some implications this result then has for designing uh, information in, in coordination games. So what this result suggests is that um, in data rich settings where players have access to many signal draws, a designer who's seeking to facilitate efficient coordination uh, should follow kind of two general principles. Uh, first, the designer should focus only on improving individuals first order information about the state. So their individual uh, informativeness of signals. In contrast, kind of providing additional signals uh, about other player signals that don't convey direct information about the state has a negligible effect in these data rich environments. And so this contrasts perhaps with the kind of conventional with them in the higher order beliefs literature uh, that uh, uncertainty about other players' signals can be a significant source of inefficiency in, in coordination games. But the reason this holds in our setting is precisely because of this key insight that we've seen that higher order uncertainty becomes negligible relative to first order uncertainty as the number of signal draws grows large. And so in data rich settings, what the, what the designer should focus on is simply making first order information as precise as possible. And then second, the designer should also be egalitarian in the sense that she should improve, uh, sh should focus on improving the worst informed agent's information about the state. And that's because as is captured by this learning efficiency index, the speed of common learning is the same as the slowest player's speed of individual learning. So all that matters is how fast the worst informed uh, player learns the state. Okay, so uh, let me conclude then. Um, so in this paper, we've conducted a comparison of multi-agent information structures uh, in a learning setting. Um, our key result was to characterize the speed of common learning under each information structure. And we then use this to show that information structures that uh, lead to faster common learning induce more efficient equilibrium outcomes in any coordination game that is played after sufficiently many signal draws. And of the key insight that I've iter iterated many times on which uh, this, this paper relies is to show that higher order uncertainty vanishes faster than first order uncertainty, um, as was formalized by this, by this key lemma I showed. And so we use this to show that the speed of common learning uh, simply boils down to the slowest player's speed of individual learning. And this also had the implication that the multi-agent learning efficiency index that characterizes the speed of common learning does not depend on the correlation across agent signals. And finally, I highlighted some implications for information design in games with rich data. Okay, I think I'm actually slightly over time, so my apologies. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you. I have a little question. Can you please go back two slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. No, so no. Going ahead. Yeah. Here. Okay. This one? Uh, no. Next. Next. Yes. Okay. Yes. What you showed is that uh, when you compare, you fix a model, you fix a, an information structure. Yeah. Then uh, uh, it turns out that uh, common learning uh, happens uh, in, in the same rate as individual learning, right? Yeah. How can you how can you uh, conclude from this that adding signals about other signals has negligible effect because now we are comparing two different models? 
Ah, no, so so these would be two different information structures. So yeah. you could compare yeah. information structures where we we leave the marginal signal distributions unaffected. And we where all we're doing is changing the correlation. So that's what I'm trying to say with this. So so each player's marginal distributions of private signals in each state are the same, but I make them more correlated, which can be understood as saying I provide more information to players about the signals that an, uh, other players have seen. I see. What if you add signals about the signals that others are seeing? Is it the same as your? Yeah, so I guess it depends on how you formalize it. So they have to be added in such a way that these signals don't uh, change the marginal distribution. So my okay. signals about your signals shouldn't convey information about the state. If they do that, then that will improve my marginal informativeness, which is and helpful. Yes, exactly. Okay. But if, if say, my signals and your signals are both kind of the state plus some shock, and all I do is, um, as a designer, I give you some information about what the other agent's shock was that that would kind of fit this the setting I have in mind here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? And there are questions in the chat, Mira. Can you read oh. uh, them or, or I should read out? I see. So, okay, so the question is to, oh, I think Lyoto already responded, but so to what extent do your results depend on your choice of KL divergence as the measure for statistical distance? Have you considered using a distance metric? So so again, this is this is not really an assumption of ours that we've decided kind of arbitrarily to use KL divergence. This is what, what is needed to characterize the exponential rate of learning. So in the in the individual learning setting, we already saw that the rate of individual learning is given by this Chanoff distance, which is based on, on kullback leibler divergence of states. So that's just the characterization of the speed of individual learning. And if one used some other uh, distance-based metric, this characterization would not hold. It's important that this is the kullback leibler divergence. And likewise, for our multi-agent index, um, the result says that the rate of common learning is given by this index. So, so this is the, the correct notion um, that is needed to capture the rate of common learning. And kind of mathematically, the reason this is needed is to apply large deviation theory arguments. So Sanoff's theorem that I mentioned relies crucially on using kullback leibler divergence as, as the notion of statistical distance. So do you regard this as extending Chernoff in some sense? Yeah, I think you could view it as extending Chernoff to settings with uh, multiple players and so higher order uncertainty instead of just first order uncertainty. And then in that sense, in a nutshell, the insight is that even though you might expect that higher order uncertainty should add something beyond Chernoff, in a sense, it doesn't. It, it just boils down to the to slowest players Chernoff uh, informativeness. Um, yeah. Mira. Yeah. Uh, would you mind going back to the slide uh, where you have the definition of CTP of the yes. common uh, yes, common knowledge? Yes. 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 Um, yeah, I should have, of course, credited uh, for this. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So um, the event BTP. So that's yeah. a subset of uh, this of this. Uh, sequence uh, of the sequences of signals, right? Exactly, Until exactly. Yeah. Okay. And um, you are looking at the probability uh, for CTP to go to one conditional on theta. Yeah. So I was wondering um, about a slightly different event. Um, yeah. The event that at some finite time we achieve. Uh, common p knowledge or the p mm -hmm. common knowledge yeah and we stay there for the rest of time i see so you mean you want there to be no possible reversal or something exactly so... exactly how how so is this result uh still true the, the, the equation one would that still be true that with probability one we obtain uh this kind of learning yeah, I think that's true because you do, I mean, you converge to one. So at the, you you get arbitrarily close to one and then you also stay there. So at some T, you're going to be with an epsilon of one. And then um, if T is large enough, it it will stop oscillating and you will reach one. So I think, I think that's the case. I think for our result about the rate, it would be slightly trickier. So what our result is giving us is kind of a large enough T 
after which the probability of common p-belief under one information structure is always higher than under another, but it's not saying that this probability, both of these probabilities are monotonic in t necessarily. It's just that one is higher than the other at all t greater than this cutoff t. Did that, did that make sense? Uh, it makes sense, yeah. Uh, but I was wondering about a slightly different. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so um, instead of looking at the probab uh, at the so may maybe this is true trivially. I just um, I just can't see it right away. Um, mm -hmm. But it seems an interesting sort of question as well. It's a different, possibly a different question. So instead of looking at the at the uh, limit of the probability yep. at any given t. Yeah. So we look at one single event. Yeah. Um, that uh, there is a finite time. Yeah. After which uh, we are in the event CTP. So that oh, the with probability R one in finite time. That, oh, I see. Such I see. that uh, CTP obtains for any t after t star. Basically, that with probability that's one. I see. Yeah, with probability one, I don't think is that's going to happen in 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 most uh, non-trivial information structures. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Any more questions? Apparently not. Okay, so we will thank our speaker today for a very interesting uh, presentation. And yeah, uh, we hope to see you at the next uh, One World seminar meeting in uh, two weeks' time. Yeah, thank you again for the attention and for all the great questions. Thank you. Hello. Bye, everybody. <laughs>